Oh god. Thank you for being a friend. Thanks for being a friend and supporting this local economy for a year, Shenny. Yes. Oh baby. Shakespeare, 1564 AD to whenever he died, was well known for borrowing from existing literature when writing his plays. Romeo and Juliet is pretty much lifted entirely from Arthur Brooks' poem, The Tragical History of Romulus and Juliet. Dude didn't even change the names. And as recent Shakespeare scholarship has established, the famed play William Shakespeare Presents Hamlet was lifted wholesale from the volume you are about to enjoy, To Be or Not To Be. To Be or Not To Be is both the earliest recorded example of the books as game genre, as well as the first instance ever in the then newish English language that was kicking around of an adventure being chosen by you, the reader. We've gone ahead and added illustrations, plus we've taken the liberty of marking with tiny York skulls the choices Shakespeare himself made when he plagiarized this book back in olden times. They're there in case you wish to put yourself in Shakespeare's shoes, reading this book as he did, stealing plot elements wholesale, and classing up the language as he, slash you, went, slash go. However, that is not the only way to read this book. Feel free to explore your other options, as each time you read this book, you can go on a different adventure, assuming you don't read the book like three quadrillion times, at which point the adventures will start to repeat, and they'll probably seem pretty familiar long before then anyway. Now, take yourself back to history, when ghosts walked the earth and nobody knew velociraptors were even a thing. Steal yourself to experience the magic of Shakespeare as it was meant to be experienced, in a non-deterministic narrative structure, where you end up thinking maybe you made a wrong decision, so you mark the pages you were just on, so you can always go back and make a different choice if you die for some dumb reason. To be or not to be, that is the adventure. Choose your character. Man, what if I just read the acknowledgements instead? This is so great! Ryan North is my dude. He's my man. No book comes together without an author feeling it. Bonds in debt to someone. Thanks to Metafilter for all the terrific advice on how to dispose of a body and not get caught. Spoiler alert: there are murders in this book. They have a page murders? about this. Did you know that? They're one of the top search results for how to dispose of a body. And I guess also thanks to the Canadian Security Intelligence Service. For Thank you Lunar. for being a friend. Thanks for being a friend. We're just watching a book happen, and it's great. Get rid of a dead human body. And gross dead body. Plus how to hide it. And what if I committed the murder act? How do I ditch the body and not go to jail? It's an emergency. Thanks also to Chef Michael Smith, Emily Horn, and William Shakespeare for the stew recipe. Spoiler alert. You can learn to make stew in this book, too. It's not murders all the time. Or not all the time, I love that. Boats and Thanks, Luna. Thanks so much. Sail. Spoiler alert. Play your cards right in this book, and you just might gain command of a pirate ship. Just, just be cool. And for ripping me off and making this book so famous. But which thank you applies to which person? That is for you to decide. Yes, even here... It's a little off, off. I will say that. It's up to you to choose your own adventure. But I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious. Thanks to all my artist friends who drew all these pretty pictures in the book. You've made death into a visually stunning treat. And thanks to Chrissy Calhoun for copy editing this book and fixing all my dumb mistakes. Any that remain, I added in afterwards because of brain problems. Finally, thanks to Joey Camo for his skills at chess, Ray Fox for his skills at Mad Libs, my extremely awesome wife, Jen, for being extremely awesome, and to my brother, Victor who confirmed over walkie-talkie that the idea for this book was rad. And thanks to you <laughs> for buying this book, or at least picking it up and flipping to this page. That took initiative. As a reward, you get to continue enjoying reading this book. Okay, I'm ready now. I will choose my character. Um, no. I'd rather read more acknowledgements. You know what? I want to know more about the author before I don't I know. to anything. You know what? I want to be the author before I commit to anything. 
we might we might turn off that so we can kind of just go off of it uh we'll see um i have okay i'm ready i'm i'll choose a character you have just been born congratulations good work on that thing now surprise babies are boring so we're gonna jump ahead in time to a point <laughs> where you're an adult and you've already lived a bunch of your life but i promise most of what we're skipping over was really dull you ate a lot and slept a lot and made some friends tears were shed i can control it totally had etc it was a bunch of high school stuff the awesome stuff starts now so let's begin my friend um remind me again who you are are you ophelia she's an awesome lady in her late 20s with a calm Ooh. confident and resourceful demeanor she's got a plus one bonus to science but she's also got a minus one weakness against water so heads up <laughs> Oof. here's the thing though he's an emo teen in his early 30s oh also he's the prince of denmark hamlet has a plus one resistance to magic but there's no magic in this adventure so this never gets mentioned again as of right now hamlet senior he's a king of denmark 50 years old he's super good at fighting and leading men into battle and naps let's say plus one to each look bottom line he's an unstoppable machine of death and should you choose to be him you may experience kingly glory play as ophelia play as hamlet play as hamlet senior oh man and they put the skull because that's what shakespeare did in his playthrough of this game here's the thing i've bought to be or not to be for every library that i've worked in but i've never read it <laughs> oh and scat van yes someone listens to the lumineers you are hamlet you're 30 years old and you're back i know right you, but it's okay because your home is a castle that's right ladies you're a prince Things have been rough lately. You had been trying to focus on your studies at Wittenberg University, where you and your bros, Horatio Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, all hang out. But you were called home because your father died. Then, your dead dad's brother, Claudius, married your mom, Gertrude, two weeks later. Yep, it's made you kind of upset. You raced home to comfort her, but she's married your uncle, and that is weird. You feel weird. Right now, you're in the audience chamber of your father's castle, here in sunny Denmark. King Claudius is here addressing his court. Laertes and Polonius are here too. Laertes is Polonius. Here, and Polonius is his father. Polonius is also the father of Ophelia, whom you're totally sweet on. She's not here though. Who knows what adventure she's having as we speak while you're stuck in this drafty castle room listening to other people talk about their feelings. Speaking of speaking, just now Laertes says something about how now that Claudius is king and he's attended the coronation, is it okay for him to go back to France? Claudius says, sure. <laughs> Wait a minute. You'd love to leave too and go back to school, away from this weird incesty thing your mother's gotten herself into. <laughs> so gross and weird. Ask Claudius for permission to go back to school. Hold your tongue and just wait around. Nah, I'm gonna wait around. I don't wanna go back to school. School sucks. You stay silent, but King Claudius addresses you anyway. He says he's king now and it's time for you to stop mourning, as your father is dead and everyone has to die sometime, right? Man up, he says. Walk it off, he says. Drop me a letter about it at Not My Problem Number One Cheer Up Already Lane, Dopesville, Denmark, he says. Your mom agrees with him, and then when they're done insulting you, they leave. You kind of wish you'd insulted him when you had the chance. In the meantime, you're alone in an empty council room and feeling pretty sad. An empty room offers a ton of possibilities, which include things you can do inside this empty room, such as... Talk to yourself about how your life is in ruins and how everything just sucks. Leave the room. You're finally home, and it's been weeks since you embarked. Sit on the throne as the Prince of Denmark. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to sit on this throne because I'm the best. Okay, you sit on the throne. And since I like you, I'm going to describe your situation in rhyming verse. Now, this was going to be a story all about how your life got flipped, turned upside down. Come on. Instead, you're going to sit your butt down in this chair and ignore how you're really Denmark's rightful heir. Whoa. My flow is so awesome that it infects even you. You begin rapping to yourself about yourself. Here's the lyrical truth you lay down. 
in West Denmark. I was born and raised on a battlefield is where I spent most of my days. Chilling out with dad, time stamp at all the fools and all sorts of fighting Norwegians outside of my school when a couple of armies, they were up to no good. Started repulsing our invasion of their neighborhood. Dad died one little time and my mom got scared and said, I'm marrying your dad's brother, but we weren't having an affair. You feel like you could keep spitting some extremely tight rhymes, but you also feel like you've brought yourself pretty much up to speed on your own life. Well done, Prince Hamlet. <laughs> you certainly are fresh. Continue sitting on the throne. All right. While you're busy doing that, your friend Horatio bumps into Horatio, you. Horatio, baby. A, he's in town for your dad's funeral slash mom's wedding, and that they serve leftover appetizers from one at the other. B, go surreal. <gasps> C, he's seen one and so have a bunch of other guys. D, it keeps showing up at the same time, and E, he's pretty sure it's a ghost of your dad. Finally, some adventure, some closure. You agree that you'll come with him tonight to see the ghost when it shows up again. It's such an obvious decision that it kind of feels like you don't even have a choice in the matter. Agree to go with Horatio tonight to see the ghost when it shows up again. I guess. I guess. I mean, that's all I can do. I'll be there. 11.30 sharp, you say, and Horatio leaves, satisfied. Well, now you have eight hours to blow before it's time to meet ghosts. No, because hopefully I do something again. different. <laughs> Be Ophelia for a while. Play solitaire. <laughs> We're playing solitaire, baby. World of solitaire .com. You, Hamlet, Prince of all Denmark, are now sitting in your bedroom and playing solitaire for hours and hours and hours and hours, which is a pretty colossally useless waste of your time, especially since you keep cheating. A five goes on top of a three. Hamlet, really? <laughs> anyway, at this point, we're 15 games in, and wow, if you're not careful, people might start saying that your tragic flaw is, I don't know, in action. Oh, got the him! Sun goes down, and it's almost 11.30, which hopefully you remember as the appointed hour Horatio told you about, wherein a ghost keeps showing up to bother him. Time to go meet that ghost, huh? I guess. Meet up with Horatio and... You and Horatio go to where he saw the ghost the first time. Now we play the waiting game, says Horatio. He's interrupted by the sound of trumpets. You look at him and raise an eyebrow. They make that noise to warn everyone that King Claudius is getting wasted, cool. he says. Those trumpets go off every night around this time. Oh. He sighs. Uh, Denmark, he says. At that exact moment, something insanely crazy happens. What the frig? What the frig? What the frig? A ghost is here. Look, ghost. <laughs> Look, ghost. I love it. Don't freak out, but right now you're staring cold in the face of a g g g specter. You can't even imagine how crazy this whole situation is. If you're getting... You and Horatio go to where he saw the ghost the first time. Oh. We play the waiting game, says Horatio. <gasps> oh, shit. I can go backwards and forwards with the L and R buttons. Uh-oh. Okay. I think I broke it. Oh, okay. It is, and you can go backwards and do the other things. Time to meet this ghost. Look, Don't ghost. Freak out, but right now you're staring cold in the face of a g g g specter. Everything will be okay. This whole situation is. If you're getting too scared, read this next clause over and over until you're not insane with fear anymore. I know Everything it's a choose your okay. own, but you gotta All accept right. your... Okay, we can do this. With your last shred of sanity, you quickly glance at the ghost, and then you worry that if you stare at the ghost too hard, your brain will realize it's looking at something so insanely impossible that you'll just black out. Anyway, this ghost. You can see through it, but only a little. It's weird. And I'll tell you what the frig else. This ghost does look like your dad, and he's getting closer. <laughs> Stare at the ghost intently and black out as your mind shuts down. Don't Ooh. stare at the ghost too intently and try to figure out what it wants. Run away. Listen, if I saw a ghost, I'd run the hell away. You make a break for it, screaming like a little baby. But Horatio does the same. Holy cow, holy cow, holy cow! You say, jumping over a boulder and hiding behind it. Man, that was intense. Horatio says, a hand on his chest. You both sit for a moment, each trying to catch your breath. Hey, let's go back and see if he's still there, Horatio says. Go back and check out the ghost again. I guess. Don't freak out, but right now you're staring cold in the face. Oh, of they're the making me, okay. Spectre. You can't even... 
You stare at the ghost intently and your brain shuts down and you collapse, unconscious. Um, <laughs> surprise? You are now the ghost. Before you is the unconscious body of your son, Hamlet. It looks like maybe he tripped too many balls. Yes, that's definitely what happened. There were a lot of balls lying around and Hamlet tripped on one too many of them. Maybe several. Bottom line, too many balls were definitely tripped. Right here. You expected more from your son than this. To be precise, you expected to be able to tell him that you were murdered by your brother and that he should, oh, I don't know, revenge your death? Instead, you're staring at a dude you can't even touch. You stick a finger inside Hamlet's head thinking that maybe if you can touch his brain, he'll wake up. But brains don't work that way, at least not with immaterial fingers made out of ectoplasm or whatever. And you don't make your fingers solid, which is good, because that definitely would have killed him. Wait for him to wake up. See if there's anyone else you can tell about your murder. Ooh, maybe I can tell Ophelia. You look around and see Hamlet's friend Horatio nearby. He looks like he's freaking out. Hey, you say. Listen. Horatio, right? Listen, don't freak out. He seems to freak out a little less. That's good. Hey, when Hamlet wakes up, can you tell him my own brother murdered me? You ask. Tell him I'm looking for a little revenge. Horatio nods meekly. If he doesn't want to do it, then I'll make sure to revenge you, Mr. Your Majesty's ghost, sir. Just sir is fine, you say, smiling in what you hope is a reassuring way. You look at Horatio for a moment. Well, great, you say. Perfect. Horatio looks at you. You look at him. He scuffs his feet a little. <laughs> so, uh, I guess that's it, you say. With my unfinished work now, um, finished, I suppose it's time for me to die for real now. Aww. You fade away in a shimmering light, certain that with Hamlet's intensity and Horatio's probable competence at actually achieving goals, you'll be revenged in no time. What could possibly go wrong, right? Exactly. This is most assuredly 100% solved for real. It's too bad you couldn't stick around to watch the revenging go down, but you don't make the rules. Hey, I guess you're about to find out who, if anyone, does. The end. Look at that, I did it. The Hamlo meter. Not to be! I made 16 choices. Times you were zero, times you were not. Oh! Rosencrantz, Guildensterns. <gasps> that is so good! Let's start from a checkpoint. Uh, I guess let's go back to meet our dad. What? Yes. Don't freak out, but right now you're staring cold in the face of a All right, we know all this. Let's Spectre. You can't even imagine What are we going to do? Uh, I guess we're just going to don't stare the ghost. Are you my dad? I mean, my ghost dad? You ask the ghost, but it says nothing. Instead, the ghost beckons to you. He clearly wants you to follow him and leave Horatio behind. I don't know. Is this safe? Can ghosts kill people? Can ghosts kill people? You ask Horatio. I don't know, man, but I really don't think you should be alone with that thing, he says, clearly leaving no ball untripped in his own freakout. <laughs> Hamlet, man, something is rotten in the state of Denmark. I gotta say, <laughs> he yells, his quivering finger pointing at the ghost. Well, duh. I'm gonna do it, you say, and you follow the ghost into darkness. Go on to say, by that I mean, I'm going to take this last chance to run for it. Oh, let's run for it. I'm not you fucking with no ghost. Trip over Horatio, who is also making a break for it in the opposite direction. You collide into each other and fall, hitting your head on a rock for Oh no. Is this funny? You hear the ghost say as you fade from consciousness. I don't know if this is supposed to be funny. Months later, you come to. Oh! Not much has changed. Your mom is still married to your uncle, and Horatio tells you the ghost kept coming by for a while, but eventually seemed to lose interest in the whole thing. Oh, shit. He asks what you're going to do now. You're not sure. The funeral and wedding you came back home for are long over. It's probably time you get back to the business of living your life. 
So, what do you want to do with it? Oh. Hmm. Am I going back for my degree or am I going to date? Let's date. School's for losers. Tell her she's the most important person in your life, and you mean it. You've lost faith in your family, you realize, but not in love itself. As she stares at you, tears welling in her eyes, you tell her that the love you have for her and the love she has for you, that's the most important thing. It gives both your lives meaning, and it's worth fighting for. You and Ophelia move away from Denmark and settle someplace stable, sunny, and warm. You don't get married because you never needed a piece of paper to tell you that you're happy. Aww. Ophelia starts a business selling her inventions, and you are able to live comfortably. You have two sons, Timon and Pericles. When they come of age, Timon moves to Athens, where he does very well for himself. Pericles moves to Lebanon and works on writing puzzle books. You and Ophelia await their letters with interest. This is a pretty good family man ending, I gotta say, if that's what you were going for. Nice work, man. You did it. Hell yeah! yeah. Look at that! Look at that! That's great. Oh no. What, what? No, I wanted to see my meter. I made three choices. I was once. That's it. That's such a good ending. I'm so happy. Uh, let's meet back up with Dad, I guess. I guess let's... Don't freak out, but right now you're staring cold. Yeah. Let's go with the ghost, I guess. This is you such a delight. After walking for what seems like forever, you get tired of walking. I'm tired of walking, you say. You sit down. Pretty sure I'm done walking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out. The ghost stops and speaks to you for the first time, its voice issuing forth from lungs that no longer breathe air. Hamlet. It is I, your father. Look, I can't stay around here forever, so you need to listen to what I tell you. I didn't die of old age. I did some digging around, and it turns out I was murdered. By Claudius. <laughs> you gasp, shocked and enraged, killed by his own brother. He did it while I slept. I was walking in a garden, and you know how gardens are really boring, right? <laughs> you nod. They're boring even for people who like them. Exactly, says Ghost Dad. <laughs> Well, it was so boring I fell asleep, and while I was sleeping, he poured poison in my ear. I didn't know poisons worked that way, you say. That's what I said, shouts your dad, throwing <laughs> his hands above his head in frustration. He starts to pace back and forth. Anyway, I want you to take revenge on him for me. I don't know, cuss him out or something. Pull out his chair when he's about to sit down. Offer him a high five, but then when he goes to high five you, pull your hand away and say, Too slow. Or should he offer you a high five, you must leave him hanging. <gasps> I could murder him, you offer. After all, he is sleeping with mom. Your dad stops pacing and stares at you. He's what? Tell him they got married two weeks after the funeral. Tell Ooh. him, ha ha, you were just kidding. Am I a, jo am I a joking man? I'm a joking man. I don't want to hurt um, his feelings. Just kidding, you say. Oh, phew, says your dad. That's good. If that had been the case, then I would have demanded that you murder Claudius at once. That way, he could be a ghost too, and I could sit down with him and ask him why he thought what he did was appropriate. And after hearing his reasons, hopefully we could come to some understanding. Jesus. He sighs wistfully. It would be nice to be able to do that now, rather than having to wait until decades from now when he dies of natural causes. Good news, you say. <laughs> you say they got married basically right after the funeral, and that makes Claudius king now. You explain how maybe it's not technically incest, but the timing alone sure feels squicky. Didn't he ever read the table of kindred and affinity, wherein whosoever are related are forbidden in scripture and our laws to marry together? Asks your dad. Ah, you say. You refer to the document Queen Elizabeth ordered produced, which says a marriage such as this one we're discussing is not just squicky, but a real-life hardcore sin against God, a book which later made its way into the Book of Common Prayer, itself so influential that we take many phrases such as, till death do us part, and peace in our time from it? The very same, nods your father. Although We're I learning so much. that in the future, sentiments might change as to whether or not such a marriage between genetically unrelated loving and consenting adults is among the very worst things that is possible for a human being to do <laughs> that's not necessary for us to discuss right now. You agree. Anyway, says your dad, 
Kill Claudius for me. Cool. Promise a ghost you'll commit murder. Promise a ghost you'll commit murder in the classiest verse you can come up with. I'm just gonna kill him. You clear your throat, tilt your head, put on a grin, and give your dad a double thumbs up. Right? I promise I'm gonna kill him, you say. Your dad seems satisfied. <laughs> You have begun quest kill Claudius. It's worth 3,500 experience points. We gotta get this. Leave it there and return to Horatio. You walk back to where Horatio is waiting for you. Listen, Horatio. Never speak of this whole, we totally saw a ghost thing, okay? We've got to keep it a secret. That's cool, says Horatio. No, I'm serious, man, you say, grabbing his shoulders. Some really serious stuff is going to go down. And I need you to keep this a secret. Swear that you'll never talk about this. I swear, says Horatio. Swear it, booms your dad's voice out of nowhere. He just he did. did, you shout. <laughs> Horatio looks at you questioning. Hamlet, bro, what's this all about, he says. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, you begin, than are dreamt of in my philosophy, Horatio finishes, annoyed. <laughs> Fine, right, whatever. Okay. Horatio will keep your secret. Ah, uh, shit, my wife is calling me. And at the end, I'll let you guys watch cool this while I please. answer my wife. Maybe? I mean, it's possible. Anyway, it's past midnight, and Claudius is probably falling down drunk. What now? Say goodbye to Horatio and go kill Claudius. Okay, thanks. Go home for nappy times. I have to go open the garage door. Talk amongst yourselves. You guys decide what we do. It's probably not going to make a big difference, but you guys decide what we're going to do. What are we doing? What did we decide? Did we decide? We're going for a nap? We're going with the classic? Okay. You go home and nap. The next morning it rains, so you don't leave your room. Then the next morning after that, the ground is all muddy, and you think maybe you'd leave footsteps that could be traced back to you. And anyway, long story short, several days have gone by and you haven't done a thing. To continue doing nothing for another several days, return to the top of this page and read it again. <laughs> well... Enough's enough. Time to go. Murder. Oh, we had a poll. What? Go see Ophelia. She's smart. Maybe she has some ideas on how to commit some good murders. Well, I can go back. You walk back. You clear your throat, tilt your head. You walk back to where Horatio is waiting for you. Listen, Horatio. Never speak of this whole, we totally saw a ghost thing, okay? We've got to keep it a secret. That's cool. So, um, wait, was so, this it? Know. Yeah. No, I'm serious, man. You say. Well, everyone's saying goodbye. Really <laughs> I mean, go home. Gonna go down. And I need you to keep this a secret. Swear Bruiser has been having all kinds this. of trouble today. I swear, says Horatio. Swear it. Booms your dad's voice out of nowhere. We get to hear all he this stuff. Did. I think this should have been a mobile game. Horatio looks at you questioning. Hamlet, bro. What's this all about? He says. There are more things in heaven and earth. I think at this show. point you we're mean, we're sticking to go home. <laughs> You go home and nap. The next morning it rains, so you don't leave your room. Then the next morning. Let's continue doing this. Nap. The next morning it rains, so you don't leave your room. Then the next morning after that, the ground is all muddy. Ooh. Maybe you leave footsteps that could be traced back to you. And anyway. Let's. Short, let's just go straight up murder you this dude. Done a thing. To continue doing nothing for another. You wait until it's 2 a.m., planning to sneak into Claudius's room and give him the old stabby stab. But on your way there, you find him passed out in the hallway. There's a bottle of booze in his hand. He really is a cartoon drunk. This is going to be real easy. 
You hold your hand over his mouth so he can't scream and slit his throat and he's dead within the minute. Ta-da! You leave quietly, making sure not to be seen, and head down to the shore to wash your blood-soaked hands and your blood-soaked clothes. The ocean water cleans off the blood quickly, which is great because you heard it was hard to get out damn blood spots. Turns out, nope, it's oh. actually really easy. You're glad you stayed cool and rational and didn't freak out at all during this process. Good job, champ. You walk home in your wet clothes, change into adorable pajamas, get into bed, and fall asleep. Content in the knowledge that you were right to murder a dude, and that you even had supernatural forces on your side, your dreams are generally peaceful. Oh. There's some sex stuff in there too, but whatever, man. It happens. Don't even worry about it. It's honestly not a big deal. Yeah, true. In the morning, you act super surprised that Claudius got killed to death. What? You say, waving your hands in the air. Come to think of it, that was probably a little much, but everyone bought it, so phew. And then later you become king. And check it. Your economic policies are both wise and fair, and your country becomes way prosperous. Due to economics not being a zero-sum game, you not only make the lives of your subjects better, but you actually improve the lives of those they trade with, too. Hamlet, you've literally made the world a better place. Nice. Look what I you did! Have to do was kill a human being. The end. P.S. Oh, I meant to mention it sooner, but one day you step on a butterfly that has the cascade effect of preventing not one, but two worldwide wars from occurring, centuries down the line. So, good job all around, I'd say. Keep on killing everyone who interferes with your preferred version of history, I'd say. Congratulations, you were really terrific at being Hamlet. Oh my Damn. god! For real this time. What? Dude, I'm so good. I am so good. All right, we're gonna wait this time. Surely I'm gonna be to be. What? Oh, come on. Game over. I, I napped? Nap snapped one. Poisons misused. One. Choices made nine. Times you were. Times you were not. Oh, man. All right. Do we want to do something totally different? I think we should do something totally different. Oh, no! There. Inflation. The market's going to crash. Honey, this inflation can't handle it. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it up with this. <laughs> Penguin Einstein. Yeah. William Shakespeare, 1564. All right, we, we know all this. Let's let's get to the... Let's turn this page. Let's choose our character. You just all right, this time... Who are we going to be? I say, let's be our girl, Ophelia, and find out what she's all about. Right, you're Ophelia. You are a beautiful and independent young woman, and although it makes you roll your eyes when you think about it, You've fallen in love with the prince. Aww. Prince Hamlet is funny and charming, and he seems to like you a lot. You try not to get too excited about it, because you're worried you might jinx it. But things really are going great. Only... Only it's been hard doing the long distance thing while you've both been off at university. And while you've loved studying capital S science, and you're <laughs> sure Hamlet's loved studying capital U undeclared, <laughs> it hasn't been easy. Now that you're both back together in Denmark for his father's funeral and his mother's second wedding, it's been harder still. Hamlet's really sad, and you can't blame him for that since, you know, his dad died. But you wish there was something you could do to help him. When you last saw him, Hamlet mentioned how the castle seemed cold and drafty, and for some reason it stuck with you. You've been sitting at your desk, trying to think of something you could give him that would help with that. A way of cheering him up a little. Remind him he's still got people who care about him. He wears these cloaks all the time, but then he's taking them off in warm rooms and putting them back on in cold ones. If only there was some way you could keep the rooms at a uniform temperature, he wouldn't need to be constantly adjusting his clothes throughout the day. But to do that, you'd need some way of measuring heat, and a way of transporting it through the castle, perhaps through a series of pipes. Your thoughts are interrupted by a knock at your door. Oh my god, are we going to make AC and indoor heating? It's me, says your brother. Come on, let me in. Let him in. Um, Tell him you're busy. I mean, yeah, let's let him in. You open the door for your brother. You can come in, you say. But I don't want to hear any opinions about my personal life. 
If you sleep with Hamlet, you're a slut, he says. Slam the door in his face. Um, we got him to enter your like room. world peace. Hamlet killed his Claudius in the night, and turns out he was a really good king. Let's slam the door. Bam. That felt good. Larity shouts through the door that he's sorry and just wanted to say goodbye before he left for France. But when you open the door a crack, he sticks his head in and says, I'm just saying, have sex with him and your damaged goods. He you slam the door in his face again, barely missing his nose. You shout through the door that uh -oh. it's your damaged goods. He's an entire shelf of bad. unsellable eggs that went off weeks ago. And also, as your brother, he's got an entirely unhealthy bad. interest in your sex life. Uh, uh, you're unhealthy. Larity shouts in return, and then you hear him stomp away down the hall. What a jerk. And his retorts don't even make sense. Return to desk. Yeah. At your desk, you continue your work on the problem of automatically heating the castle. Hours turn into days, and you're generally left alone by both your family and your boyfriend. Your father ignoring you is no big deal. And while you're a little worried about Hamlet not stopping by more often, he has asked you to leave him alone for a while while he mourns and you're respecting his wishes. But if you're going to be honest with yourself, you've also just gotten really absorbed in this problem. You decide to split the problem into sections, delivering heat and knowing when to deliver heat. It would be possible to put servants in every room and have them report when it's too cold, but it's both expensive and unreliable. It depends on the servant, the warmth of their clothes, how much they love to lie to people about what temperature their skin is sensing, and so on. You're wandering the castle grounds when it hits you, You've been thinking about how water expands when it freezes, and how that could be used to tell you when it's cold, but it's not much use for measuring temperatures outside the freezing point. Your father, Polonius, happens to wander by, talking to himself about the evils of drink. And you realize, alcohol. The right alcohol would expand linearly with heat, and by putting it in a slender glass vial, you could measure the size of that liquid, which would correspond one to one with temperature. What a science lesson Martin we're getting today. Each of these glass vials at the same temperatures, and you've got a universal, comparable, and consistent way of measuring heat. You wouldn't have to rely on a servant's impression. They could just tell you what line the alcohol has reached. You run back to your room to start working on the prototype. Just as you complete it, you hear a knock at your door. Who is it? You call. And oh my, who should answer from the other side of the door? Seriously, who should answer from the other side of the door? <gasps> we get to choose? Your boyfriend Hamlet. Ooh. Your father Polonius. Your best friend, Dromisio Mimus. Ooh, do you think we're going to be able... I think we should do Hamlet. Um, because he's hot. You decide you want Hamlet to be on the other side of the door. Open it, and Hamlet really is at the door. <laughs> That's so freaky. How, how'd you do that? Hamlet steps into your room. You haven't seen each other for a while. It's so great to see him. You run up and throw your arms around him and you kiss. It's just like old times. But the moment passes, and when you look at his Is face, you can see you might be broken. all over him. He's troubled by something. Ask him what's troubling him. Ooh, we should ask him. You ask him what's wrong, and, well, Ooh. there's no other way to put this, so I'll give it to you straight. Hamlet tells you about a spooky ghost and a plan for murdering his stepfather, Claudius, pretender to the throne. Hmm. I'll be frank. It sounds crazy. A ghost? Murder? But he is your friend and lover, and you're not going to leave him hanging out to dry. As gently as you can... My chat is not refreshing, that's bad. Don't exist. But even if they do, he needs to be certain that the ghost he saw was actually the ghost of his father. What yeah, some it... other ghost mm. trying to mess things up? That seems to give him pause. Hamlet admits... He oh, it just keeps going. Yeah, it's mine. Know. It's not refreshing. It's possible the ghost could be an imposter. So it just keeps saying connecting to chat. So this is bad. And if a ghost shows up, we'll figure out what to do. You're confident no ghost will appear, and this will hmm. all just go away. You take his hand and squeeze. Hamlet looks up at you, and you can see his relief. Okay, he says, smiling. Go to see the ghost that evening. Oh, let's go see this ghost. So yeah, I don't know what you're saying. Oh, it came back. Look at that. Oh, it's all back. Look at that. We have to wait till around midnight, he says think that's when he normally shows up to i can see time, your crimes now play a storytelling game you enjoy where you say one word of a story and he says the next word and neither of you knows where the story will go once you begin no more crimes he says 
No, oh, poor Andrew. You say. Time, he says. There, you say. Was, he says. Eh? You say. Beautiful, he says, looking at you. You smile. Prince, you reply, and he smiles back. It's true you are. He says. Wanted, you say. Two, he says. Kiss, oh. you say. His girlfriend, he says. That's cheating, you say. And then you're kissing. Oh, babe, she's holding a gun there. Don't make out, because, and you can't believe you're thinking this, but what if a ghost catches you making out? Oh, Andrew, stop it. Dude, we gotta keep making out. You make out for what turns out to be quite a while. As the night is warm and the stars are stunning and there are no bugs here to bite any exposed flesh, and before you know it, you've totally made out as much as it's possible to totally make out. Nice. And you fall asleep in each other's arms. If ghosts exist, and if one really did show up, he certainly had the good grace to leave you alone for your makeouts. Also, he was probably embarrassed. You were both way naked. Whoa! Both of you returned to the same spot the next evening, and the evenings after that. But it becomes more and more a date night, and less and less a a specter from beyond the grave wants to get some murders done thing. King Claudius and Polonius are not exactly thrilled with the two of you being together. But on the flip side, any urges to commit regicide that were floating around have begun to fade too. Though you talk about it often, the whole encounter with the ghost, if it really did happen, takes on the quality of a dream. Rather than do the long distance thing again, you decide to move in together and get your own place here in Denmark. Together, the two of you work on finalizing the invention of the alcohol thermometer. It works. And even figure out the other half of it, a way to move heated air throughout a building. Congratulations, you invented central heating. It's an invention that all of Denmark wants, and most are willing to pay for. While it's not the largest, you do live in the most comfortable estate in the entire country, thanks to the heating money. One bright summer day, as the two of you walk through the castle garden, you get down on one knee and say words to the effect of, Sweetie, you're the most important person in my life, and I can't imagine ever living without you. I want to make you as happy as you make me every single day. Let's get married. You mean every word. Uh -huh. It's not the most traditional proposal in the world, nor is it the most traditional wedding, but it's wonderful and beautiful and perfect. You're very happy. You don't invite Claudius to the wedding. Oh. A few years later, Claudius falls ill with some sort of lung disease, and his doctors are unable to treat it effectively. He passes away only a few months later, having never produced an heir. Shortly after, the two of you become the new king and queen of all of Denmark. Your first child, Alex, is born five months later, and you all live very happily ever after. The end. Dude, hell yeah! We invented a thermometer and lived a happy life. Not to be womp womp. Yeah, we gotta get crazy here. We gotta we gotta do some wild stuff. <laughs> That's a Kate Beaton drawing. All right, let's let's go back to um Uh let's do uh some of the Uh you have just been born. Congratulations. Good work on that thing. Oh, how close you were to Billy? Uh -huh. Babies are boring, so we're All right, let's do Ophelia again. Right. Um, tell him you're busy. I'm... Oh, shit. I'm busy, you shout through the door to Larity's. I'm leaving for France soon, he shouts back. Don't you want to say goodbye? Apparently not, you shout in reply. Whatever, Larity's yells. He storms off, stomping all the way. You sit in silence for a moment. He stomps back. Say bye to Dad for me, okay? He shouts. Okay, I will. You yell through the door. He storms off again. To France, I guess? Brothers, am I right? Let's get back to work. At your desk, you continue your work on the problem of automatically heating the castle. Hours turn into days and you're generally left alone by both your family and your boyfriend. 
Your father ignoring you is no big deal. And while you're a little worried about Hamlet not stopping by more often, um, did we see this? Alone for a while while he mourns, and you're respecting his. Yeah, I think we did. So this time, let's see if our dad's gonna be coming. Hamlet is at the door. That's right. Turns out that simply wishing for someone to be at your door doesn't change who's actually there. You don't control reality with your thoughts, Ophelia. Oh. Anyway, Hamlet opens the door and steps into your room. It's me, he says. You haven't seen each other for a while. It's so great to see him. You run up and throw your arms around him and you smooch. It's just like old times. But the <laughs> moment passes. And when you look at his face, you can see concern written all over it. He's troubled by something. What did we do? We asked him last time? Let's wait for him to tell. You wait, doing nothing. And he pulls away from you and holds you at arm's length. Listen, he says. And then he begins unbuttoning his jacket, taking his garters off, and... Oh gosh, yes. He's actually doing it. He's fouling his stockings. <laughs> stockings, no. You ask in alarm. What you say next sounds like the obvious question, but you ask it anyway. Why are you fouling your stockings? Instead of answering, he grabs you by the wrist. You come to the entirely obvious conclusion that he's not acting like himself. This conclusion is reinforced in the next few moments, when he moves his other hand to his forehead as if he might faint. But instead of fainting, he stares at you intensely. Oh no. Hamlet, I don't know why you're doing this, you begin. And he sighs really loudly. It's the most intense sigh you've ever heard. Oh my god. It's actually kind of impressive. Look, if you'll just talk to me, we can wait. You begin, and he sighs again, so loudly that it literally drowns out your words. Fine, weirdo. Let's play the wrist-holding game. Yay. <laughs> you meet his eyes, and he sighs one of those ultimate sighs again. Then gets up and leaves in what can only be described as the creepiest way possible. Walking with his head wrenched over his shoulder so he can watch you even as he crab walks out the door. Well, that was weird. Maybe he's sick. You decide to check in with your dad because as annoying as he is, he does have some experience in these matters. Hmm, yeah, let's Follow let's go Hamlet. do that. Uh, Hamlet's too weird. We don't want to deal with weirdness. Dad. Hey, Dad, is Hamlet sick? You ask, knocking on the door as you open it. Polonius isn't there. Instead, in his room, you find an oversized yet crude paper mache Hamlet head and a note labeled, Three-step plan to replacing Hamlet. <laughs> Let's take a look at that note, shall we? It reads, Step one, make Hamlet disguise. There's a check mark next to this one. Step two, hide behind curtain and then jump out at Hamlet so he gets so scared that he dies. There's no check mark next to this one. That's a relief. <laughs> Step three, dispose of body, wear Hamlet disguise, take over his life. <laughs> wow, this is creepy. Turns out your dad is crazy, I guess. And with Hamlet sighing his way through insanity, that's pretty much the two most important men in your life gone bonkers. <laughs> the only ones left are Brother Laertes and King Claudius. And you don't really like those two guys that much anyway. Well, Ophelia, you basically have two choices here. You can pretend you didn't see this note, go to Hamlet's room and ask him what's going on. Or you can say, screw these guys and go on vacation. And someone else can deal with this. Or if not, these two can just dang well figure it out on their own. You've got the money, Ophelia. And you've wanted to get away for a Ooh, while. Ooh, do we go on vacation? Go ask Hamlet what his friggin' deal is. I think we want to go on vacation. Vacation sounds good. Hell yeah. A few hours later, you're on a boat for England. Yep, it's that easy to make a vacation happen. In fact, I'm kind of surprised you're not reading this book on a real-life vacation. Aww. Unless you are. In which case, I am still kind of surprised. But it is a pleasant surprise. So yay you. Later, haters. You shout as you wave from the deck of the ship down to the pier below. Nobody's there to see you off, though. Woo! <laughs> you the, empty pier. the trip itself takes a while. Wind-powered boats, not the fastest mode of transportation, and is pretty uneventful. But the good news is that when you arrive, you've happened to catch England's annual two weeks of nice weather. Ah, <laughs> uh, get on. It's fun because you're pretty sure you kind of just broke up with Hamlet. Because as soon as he started acting crazy, you split town. After hanging around your hotel for a few days, you've made small talk with three people who seem to be non-duds. There's Antonio Tony, the mysterious and sexy tourist, Cleopatra Slim, the friendly adventurous explorer, and Brother Pat, the religious guy who drinks a lot. Oh, man. <laughs> so, who do you want to hang out with tonight? Ooh. You have the next few weeks to talk to your chosen person. And if you choose the right dialogue option, you might even get them to fall in love with you. That's right. 
this is a dating simulator. And you're just going to sit here and keep reading this book as you get to know a bunch of imaginary people and pretend you're trying to date them. Uh, oh, man. Take a deep breath and decide to chat up. J just don't do a poll. Just write. I'm playing a dating sim. Uh, T, S, or P. Just type that. Help me. Help influence me. T, S, P. T, S, P. T, S, P. Or A, C, B. Wait, or A, B, C. Shit. Oh, no. It's too confusing. <laughs> so, wait. What was this guy? I don't know which letter. If they're all A. <laughs> I was going Tony Slim or Pat. But this is also A, B, C. But also A, C, B. It's so confusing. They're all A? Ah! <laughs> Emmy was the first one and said C. And this is the only C on the board. We're doing this. You knock on Cleopatra's door. She answers wearing a very snappy dress. Hi, Cleopatra, you say, but she interrupts you. Please, Ophelia, call me Cleo and come in, she says. Is this the lesbian one? Room. Ophelia, the room is gorgeous. Whoever she is, Cleo must have tons of money. Is it her own? Are her parents supporting her somehow? You resolve to find out. You walk into the room and Cleo softly clicks the door closed behind her. So, Ophelia, she says, turning to face you. To what do I owe the pleasure of your company? She's kind of stunning. For a second, you forget what you were going to say, but then you remember. Cleo, I'm bored. Cleo, oh, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten lunch, so yeah, we're doing this. Cleo laughs. You came down to invite me to dinner personally, Ophelia? Yes! That's adorable. Of course I'll join you. I've already eaten, but I'll get some drinks while you eat. I know the perfect place a few doors down from here. It sounds really nice, but before you can say so, a huge explosion rocks the hotel. Debris showers into the room, knocking Cleo unconscious. Looks like dinner will have to wait. You're under attack by terrorists. Oh my god. Ah, screw this dating thing. You have three terrorists to kill. Run down to the site of the explosion. My date! <laughs> you burst into the lobby and it looks like a war zone. Injured people are staggering everywhere. The time bombs aren't really a thing yet, so the terrorist, or terrorists, I mean, I guess I already let it slip that there's three of them, but let's pretend I didn't. Must be nearby. Spinning around, you look for anyone suspicious. There's a man very conspicuously trying to look very inconspicuous as he leaves the hotel. Hey, you, you shout, and he breaks into a run. Looks like this is your man. You give chase and slam into him, <laughs> sending him straight into a wall. He hits his head hard and falls back, dazed. You pick him up by the collar. Who sent you? You ask. What? He replies. You slap him across the face and he laughs. So you close your hand into a fist and shatter his nose. He's not laughing now. In fact, he's in a lot of pain. Not gonna ask you twice, you warn. Okay, okay, jeez, gasps the man. I was helped by my two terrorist friends, George and Margaret. They're in a coffee shop two blocks away. You mash around his broken nose a little. Okay, okay. Three blocks away, he shouts through the pain. You press your fingers against his eyes and he cries out. You wait for him to stop and take a breath. You killed a lot of people back there, you say. I think given our current cultural context and the fact that we're not operating with the benefit of hundreds of years of ethical development that some hypothetical future people might have, I'm justified in killing you. His only answer is to whimper. Did you know there's a name for that judicial framework? He shakes his head. And then you pull out one of his eyes with your fingers. Oh my god! <laughs> you say. As he's screaming, you decide to actually break his neck and kill him, since that's what an eye for an eye means in its non-literal sense after all. You then run down towards the coffee shop he indicated, coming in through the back door. Everyone is talking nervously about the explosion except for two people. Hey, George! Margaret! You shout, and the two people who weren't talking both look towards you. Bingo. You pull up a chair to the side of their table and throw your arms around their shoulders. Listen, guys, it kind of sucks that you blew up all those people, you say. Um, why? Oh, no! You burst into the lobby and it looks like a war zone. Oh, my God. Come on. Time bombs aren't really a thing yet, so the terrorist... I hit the button! 
guess I already let it slip that there's three of them. I'm sorry. Must be nearby. Spinning around, you look for anyone suspicious. There's a man very conspicuously trying to look very inconspicuous. Uh, here, here, here. We'll do this. We'll do this. I'm sorry. Oh, what? Ha, ha, ha. That's crazy. What do you think? That we were the terrorists, says George. All right. Ha, ha, ha. That's kind of crazy. The thing they accuse me of. You say your arm's still around their shoulders. Let's talk about this outside. You're pulling them by their collars and dragging them into the alley behind the coffee shop. <clears throat> you let them go, and their demeanors change instantly. <clears throat> Uh, what'd you do with Patrick, demands Margaret. Who's Patrick, the guy, the dead guy? I killed him. He's dead now. <clears throat> Horse dropping, says Margaret. I don't believe you, sup a doodle. Oh no, I, oh no, I can prove it. And you grab Margaret with both hands. Here's what I did to your friend that made him dead. Oh shit, seconds later, Margaret's way dead body is laying on the, by the feet of the broken nose and a missing eye. You look up at George, who's staring at Margaret's body in shock. Do you believe me, Georgies? <clears throat> Georges? Why is there an S? He hesitates, unsure whether uh, whether yes or no is the right answer. You decide to help him out. There's no right answer here, Georges. <laughs> I thought it was just George. Sometimes life isn't fair, you say. And you break his neck, too. Them's the breaks, you say. All right, now we can get the sound back. Also, is it loud enough? Can you hear it? Is it good? Everyone is talking nervously about the explosion. I don't know if the mu if everything is loud enough. It's quiet, so I should up it. Okay, remember twenty two point two is the good number. You pull up the chair to the side of their table and throw your arms around their shoulders. Listen, guys. I may have made it too loud. all those people, you say. But let's see. Are we going back to the hotel? <laughs> it does have sound. I'm sorry. Says George. <laughs> well, I can't. Uh, can I? What a crazy thing for me to accuse you of. Oh my you God. Your arms still what? Your the music is good volume, but narration is so low. It's backwards. Patrick demands Margaret. Who's Patrick? That's bazonkers. You say. Didn't someone just? Oh my God. What is this? Says Margaret. I don't believe you. Oh no, I can prove it. You say. Oh, you this Margaret sucks. Hands. Here. All right, what whatever. Let's see if this is better. We're going Seconds back to the hotel. Way no, way we gotta stay here. That's where our girlfriend is. Up. You decide to stick around. You make your way back to the hotel and offer your services to the local authorities. They are wary until you reveal that you've already tracked down and killed the terrorists responsible for the hotel attack. At which point they're impressed. The terrorists were carrying notes admitting their guilt. So the authorities know you aren't just a regular murderer. Oh. This is really lucky. Good thing I thought to put that detail in your story, huh? After the bodies are carried away, you excuse yourself and return to the hotel lobby, where you convince a still-shocked hotel clerk to extend your stay by another six months. And I may be staying longer after that, too, you say. Although the terrorists responsible for this attack are taken care of, they weren't operating alone. Okay, says the clerk. There's a whole terrorist organization here that needs to be brought to justice as quickly and as painfully as possible, you say. And Ophelia, that's exactly what you do. I don't want to spoil it all for you, but there's this one point down the line where you're base jumping off a cliff down to the rocks below, and you pull back your arms to reveal a gliding suit you've invented, and you swoop down using that suit and crash horizontally into some terrorists so hard that you literally tear them a new one, where one is a gaping wound in their chest. You put pointy spears on your hands. That's part of the gliding suit. So, that's something to look forward to. Wait. Yeah. What? I, the pictures go away too fast. Maybe we can go to the gallery and see them. Let's see how we do. Not to be. I guess it is how far you get in like the original story. Your adventure stats. Puns dealt. Oh, baby. <laughs> Choices made 11. Times you were, times you were not. Games of tennis played. Um, how do I, can I, art gallery? Let's look at the, where was it? Oh, there's so many. This was our photo. Look at that. Look how badass she is. G 
get it, girl? These guys are fucking dead. Ooh, what's this one? Oh my god, look at all this. Look at all these choices we can make. Oh, so many choices. Time travel! Don't freak out. This is so cute. Look at them. He, they made a toilet. Well, see, here's the thing. And this was the uh, this was the other image that we got. It's see see. Look at the story. He he murders him real quick, like, and then just cleans off his clothes, and he's fine. He goes to sleep, and then he's like, "What?" And now he's king, and he does really great, and he's the best. Um, restart from a checkpoint. Oh, oh, so, so, are we going on vacation? Let's go on vacation again and do a little bit more. A few hours later, you're on a boat for England. Let's go on a yep, different date. We've easy. already seen all this. All right, who are we dating? Now, do we date Cleopatra again? And do a different thing. I kind of want, we all, <laughs> Alicia was first. <laughs> you knock on Cleopatra's door. All right, where where were we with this? All right, so we couldn't go to dinner. So do we just tell her we're bored? Or do you think we're, we were going to try to, like, cry on her shoulder and maybe have, like, some pity sex? <laughs> and your friend? Yeah. Cleo takes a small step closer to you and puts her hand on your shoulder. Ophelia, I know we're still at the beginning of this you and me thing, but I'd be happy to be that friend you need tonight. Sit there. I'll get us some drinks, and we'll talk all about it. But before you can move to the pillow, oh, she gestures no. to a huge explosion rocks the hotel. Do oh man. Cleo take Regardless, later, they're still bad. For England. Yep, it's that easy to make. Let, let's see if there's anything. Maybe she you stays alive for this one. All right. Cleo, I'm bored. Cleo laughs. I'm sure there's something that two people like us could get up to, she says. What do you feel like? Before you can reply, a huge explosion rocks the hotel. <laughs> there's, there's an explosion no matter what. So there, there's terrorists regardless. A few hours later. So our date with Cleo is not going very well. So I know, right? It's 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 very sad. No no we we've only been able to do it once this game. Yeah, we've only we've only gotten two spicy scenes. Pat, all right, brother Pat. Brother, we're not going to get to do anything fun with brother Pat, Pat other than drink. Hey, I think Pat, it'll be a good time. You say, but Pat is passed out next to his drink. Well, you sure know how to choose him, Ophelia. You quickly return to your room to consider your remaining options. What? Cleopatra oh, come on. You knock on Antonio's door. He answers, wearing a very snappy suit. Man, he looks great. I will describe his lips as being enticing, his eyes as being reflective pools in which you feel you might drown, and his legs as being apparently unable to quit. Hi, Antonio, you say. It's me, Ophelia. Are you busy tonight? Never too busy for a pretty lady, says Antonio. Though you should know, generally my nights tend to end what up... What an introduction. ...erotic. Oh, you say. <laughs> Weird. Yeah, it's like a curse or something, Antonio says. Just once I'd like to have a regular date without it descending into mind-blowing eroticism. Huh, you say. Ask about mind-blowing eroticism. <laughs> Ask about what he'd like to do instead. You know what? What does he want to do instead? Well, I mean, is there something else that you would like to do instead? You begin, 
and just then a huge explosion rocks the Fucking rooftop. hell. Debris showers into the room, knocking Antonio unconscious. Looks like you're under attack. By terrorists. <laughs> well, I mean... You knock on... Regardless, we're, we're dealing with the terrorists. Tell me, Antonio, what's your favorite act of mind-blowing erotic and... You begin. And just then a huge explosion... I guess we can leave Denmark, leave back for Denmark. You go back to the hotel, pushing your way past a crowd of onlookers and local authorities assessing the blaze and damages. Back in your remarkably undamaged hotel room, you quickly pack your bags. On the way out, you stop by the room you were in when the bomb first went off and leave a single rose on your date still Aww. unconscious but otherwise okay, actually more than okay body, along with a short handwritten note. I had fun. XOXOXO. Oh. You want to hop on the next boat to Denmark, but it leaves, like, six weeks from now. Boats, man. <laughs> Instead of waiting, you journey on an indirect path involving three countries, six connecting cruises, and two week-long layovers. It's honestly not bad. You've had worse times. When you finally arrive in Denmark, the place is quiet. Too quiet. Nobody is there to greet you on the pier. You drop your bags off at your room and head to the royal court, again seeing nobody along the way. The only sound you hear is the echo of your own footsteps. When you open up the doors of the royal court, you find a room full of dead bodies. Oh my God. Hamlet, your family, the king and queen, and some dude is there on the throne. What the hell? What the hell? You say. <laughs> Did you kill these people? No, man. They killed each other. Hi, I'm Fortinbras. Oh I'm my God, Fortinbras! Horse droppings, you say. That's what they say in England to mean bull droppings. You explain. <laughs> no, honest. I showed up and everyone was dead, and it turns out that Hamlet's dying wish was that I should assume the throne, he says. How did you know what Hamlet's dying wish was if everyone was dead? You ask. Oh, there's a perfectly logical explanation for that as well, says Fortinbras. Hamlet's friend was here and saw it all, and stuck around long enough to tell me. It was a cool story. He's gone now, though, he finishes. Um, he says. It's not the most credible story in the world. Accuse him of lying. Hmm. Accept his explanation and go back on vacation. We should go back on vacation. Denmark is crazy. Denmark is fucking crazy. Good idea, Ophelia. You return to England for your vacation, which lasts longer and longer until it's what you might call a staycation, Ooh. which is a terrible word. But all I'm trying to say is you live the rest of your days very happily, very far away from Denmark. Here's something you were chuffed to discover. Like Denmark, England is full of lots of very interesting, very attractive people, and you make a lot of friends there who are, I'll give it to you straight, stone-cold hunks and smoking hot babes. Oh my god. If you don't want children, then you don't have any. But if you want children, let's say you meet someone amazing, like the person from the hotel, and have children with them. Or you adopt. Whatever, man. I'm easy. The end. Yes! God, she's got a gun. Puns dealt. Choices made six. Let's take a look at that. Where was it? Oh, baby. Look at these hunks. Look at these hotties. I love it. We are just doing our best. I love this. <laughs> this is a Shakespeare play. <laughs> right? Oh my god, this is great. What a delight. So you know it's like, what <laughs> we all were. <laughs> oh. Alright, I guess let's... Ophelia's been fun. Um, let's do the vacation. I want to lie and see what happens. We've gotten some Cleo art. Oh, Cleo art. Later, I, well, we gotta earn England. it. Hold up. Let's. Yeah, we've seen all this. All right, let's go back home. Let's tell him he's lying. Keys him lying. All right. You're lying, you say, thinking maybe it's time for you to kill a dude. 
again. No, wait! I can prove it! Horatio, come back here, please, he shouts. A few seconds later, Horatio pops his head in the door. You called for me, my king? Yeah, um, this woman. I'm sorry. I didn't get your name. Ophelia, you say. Mm -hmm. This Ophelia doesn't believe I'm king because everyone else died, and then Hamlet wanted me to be king. Tell her that's what happened. Horatio turns to you and shrugs. Sometimes reality is real stupid, Horatio <laughs> says. Perfect, Fortinbras says, smiling. Okay, now that we've got that establishing that I'm the rightful king of Denmark thing out of the way, off with their head. Wait, what? You say. And it's actually the last thing you ever say because Horatio slices off your head in one smooth motion and you can't speak without vocal cords, Ophelia. Oh Sheesh. my god. You know this. You've dissected enough dead bodies to know what strings do what. I mean... You used to know this before you died from not having a body attached to your head anymore. The end. Oh my god! That sucks. <laughs> Times you were not. Oh no. Alright. Let's do one more little. Let's do some things with uh, the king. Mostly. We're not going to do a whole lot of these because it's. You know, it's it's a book. Go read the book. The game is seven bucks, too, which is really nice. William Shakespeare. Oh, can you just choose any checkpoint? You kind of can. What is this one? Whoa, whoa. Slow down there, cowboy. At the end of that last bit, you were supposed to make a choice and then jump to the page that reflects that choice. Instead of following those instructions, you just kept reading what came next like this is an ordinary book. This book is crazy insane. How are you even acting like this is an ordinary book? <laughs> you die without even having chosen your character. The end. And your final score is maybe learn to read books better sometime out of a thousand. It's him. Dude, that's not a very good score, I gotta say. You have just been born. I think that was Ryan Congratulations. Morris. Good work on that like. thing. Now, surprise. All right, we're going to play as Hamlet this or Hamlet senior this time, but I have to go to the bathroom. So, I'm just going to put this up and let us enjoy this beautiful photo. One second. Or is this button? I need this button. Okay.
All right, were we happy looking at the beautiful people? Also, I was thinking about this while I was gone. People in UK, UK land, um, how y'all, how y'all write, do the, on your keyboard is the dollar symbol for shift four, the pound symbol? UK land, yeah. <laughs> what, what, how do you type the pound so fast? Shift three? No, shift three is, is pound. Oh, but wait. The pa oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. It's what is it's oct oct to something oct octolthorpe oct oct octal oct oct uh, cr cross hash yeah octothorpe you are king hamlet all of denmark is under your command everything's going so great for you at present you are in norway where just this afternoon you led denmark's forces to an astounding victory during which you personally killed the norwegian king Stabbed him right through the head, you did. His eye popped out and rolled on the ground, and then you stepped on it. Whoa. Your ass is bad. You are a badass. You decide after a day of being good at fighting, you should have a nap. You've earned it. You settle down in an orchard for some nappy times. During your delightful rest, your brother pours some poison in your ear, and you die. Surprise! You didn't know poisons worked that way. <laughs> wow. You've barely made one choice so far, and you're dead already. Way to go, champ. You're really good at books, huh? No. It's just a stellar job you're doing here, Chuckles. The end. Okay, fine. I feel sorry for you. Here's a choice that you can choose. Huh? Become a ghost. Good news. The afterlife exists, and it's full of ghosts. You know this because you're now one of them. You get to spend all your time slamming doors, rattling chains, and telling on the person who killed you. But here's the thing. <laughs> I, the author, told you... The reader that your brother poured poison in your ear while you napped but you as hamlet senior have no idea how you died you slept through the whole thing so you need to figure out who killed you if you're going to revenge yourself on your murderer assuming you even were murdered because remember that for all you know you could have died of a heart attack this is an example of dramatic irony only since we're in the second person it's an amazing example of an entirely new species of dramatic <laughs> irony something i'm going to call Second person pronoun paradoxical auto dramatic irony. You That's are good. now aware of information that you're not aware of. This should be fun. <laughs> Except that you died of a heart attack. Listen in on people's conversations and see if any of them. You hang around Norway for a bit, trying to listen in on what people are saying, but they're all speaking Norwegian. You only speak Danish, so understanding Norwegian is a little difficult. It all sounds like Swedish to you, which actually makes a lot of sense since Danish, Norwegian, and Swedish are all related North Germanic languages, descended from early linguistic differentiation between regular Germanic speakers and North Germanic speakers around 200 AD. You nod your head, agreeing that all of this is both accurate oh, is and extremely interesting. I can fix it. While these three languages are generally can supposed to be mutually intelligible, well, it is out of sync one. Norwegian speakers only if you're concentrating, which you are, and if they're speaking slowly and clearly, which they're not. As everyone is running around upset about it, it war, doesn't match up as well. And all as these should. kings getting killed. Ironically, Norwegian speakers can understand Danish for once it's not Danish my speakers card. understand Norwegian, but that doesn't help you much. That would only be useful if you were playing as a Norwegian king whose ghost had stowed away on your army's boat headed back to Denmark. But I haven't given you that option, even though it would be extremely awesome. Sometimes I have to if press you're wondering Ada what happens to, to this vengeful up, like ghost. King, I can tell you only this the answer exists in your imagination. But here's the good news. It turns out written Danish and written Norwegian are actually pretty similar. 
So you spend the next several nights haunting people, quietly reading their diaries while they sleep peacefully in their beds. And you don't know this, but ghosts do this all the time. Ghosts just love sneaking a peek at the secrets of the living. Ooh. It takes a while, but you finally find the diary of someone who wrote, on the day you died, that she was wandering by a garden, minding her own business, when she saw some Danish guy pour something in some other Danish guy's ear. Hey, that sounds like what could have happened to you. But remember, you don't know that's exactly what happened to you because of the new irony we invented. <laughs> Wake up this person and ask her about it. Ooh. Wake up this person and hold up a piece of paper where you've written down a question asking her about it. Yeah, because she's not going to understand me because I speak Denmark. Danish. <laughs> you grab a piece of paper and write down the words, Hey, I'm not here to kill you. I just want to know about that murder you maybe witnessed. But in Danish, of course. Ha <laughs> ha. You gently shake the woman awake while holding the piece of paper up in front of her. She's freaked out initially. She was just woken up by a g g ghostly apparition from beyond the grave. But once she reads your note, she looks at you suspiciously and says, For real? You flip over the paper and write, Yeah, I'm the guy that got killed maybe. And I guess I want to revenge my death or whatever. But please speak slowly as Norwegian is not my native language. I'm from Denmark. Oh, the woman says in Danish. I speak Danish too. Kick ass, you reply. <laughs> She tells you what she saw and gives you a physical description of the guy. Unfortunately, the man answering to her description could only be one person. Your brother, Claudius. Congratulations, my king. You now know what you know, so that whole second person pronoun paradoxical autodramatic irony thing has been slain. You have been awarded 500 experience points. Plus, you've unlocked a new quest. Revenge yourself on Claudius. Nice. You're feeling pretty chuffed about this whole situation. Okay, let's revenge your death. Your murderer is getting away with it in Denmark. Swim back to Denmark. Wait for the next boat back to Denmark. Ooh, how far do you think it? How far is it? What am I gonna level up? Uh, I think. Well, either my boating skills or my swimming skills. That's what I'm gonna level up. Um. But see, here's the thing: can go swim. Like, can go swim in the sense that. They never get tired. Do ghosts get tired? That is the question. Can a ghost get tired? Yeah, well. Hmm. Which class of ghost am I? That's the thing. Like, they've said that I've been a specter and a ghostly apparition. That's their whole thing. Ooh, do you think if I... Ooh, maybe. Maybe. If I get on the boat... I can become a ghost pirate. Pirate ghost. You go down to the docks and start poking your head into the bridge of every boat you can find, flipping through the captain's logs and itineraries until you find one that's headed for Denmark and it leaves in just a few minutes. Nice, this is really convenient. During the voyage, you poke around the boat looking for things to amuse yourself with. You experiment with doing some ghost things, like putting your head inside a barrel of wine and then making your head corporeal, but that just causes the barrel to explode with a sudden pressure inside oh no. and makes you get wine in your eyes, so you don't do that more than a few times. It only takes a while okay. before your boat arrives in Denmark. Arrive in Denmark. You make it back to Denmark. The first thing you want to do is track down your brother to take revenge. Turns out, that's really easy because he's in the first place you check. The royal court. He's there with your widow, Gertrude. Oh no. Weird. They're acting all close and stuff. Oh well. He's probably just trying to comfort her after your untimely death. Ha. <laughs> Brothers are really great. Though, maybe not. Listen in on what they're saying. Ignore what they're saying. I'm certain there's nothing untoward going on. Hmm, but am I gonna get upset when I hear this? Hey, Gertrude, says Claudius. I sure am happy that we married each other, even if it was so soon after your first husband died under mysterious circumstances. Whoa, that certainly was, in terms of exposition, a very efficient sentence. <laughs> you decide instantly that your initial revenge plan, 
Haunt a mirror so that instead of Claudius's reflection, he sees you. And then you mirror his movements, so he's not really sure what's going on. Hehe. <laughs> is needlessly complex and stupid. Dude killed you and married your widow. Since you are from olden times, you have an extremely old-fashioned sense of ownership over female sexuality, so this really gets stuck in your craw. <laughs> Instead of spooking Claudius, you decide to kill Claudius, complete the quest, Ooh. get your son to kill Claudius instead. Ghosts can kill people, right? Like, you can haunt the hell out of them, and they just get... Well, I wasn't... Let's just kill him. This is awesome, and it's going to go great, because who better to know how to kill someone than someone who has recently been through that getting killed to death process themselves. You wait until Claudius is sleeping, next to your beloved Gertrude for some reason. Ha, huh, that's weird. Then wake him up by tapping him on the forehead a bit. Hey, it's me, you whisper. Your brother, the one you murdered. Ah, oh, crap, Claudius whispers back. Ghosts are real. Real pissed at you, anyway, you reply. Listen, I'll cut to the chase. We are from a time where an eye for an eye is considered to be a good thing to build a justice system around. <laughs> so I am here to kill you. How? Claudius asks, his eyes wide, terrified. Oh, jeez. So many ways, you say, counting them off on your fingers. I could startle you and make you have a heart attack, but that takes time. I could throw a pot at your head until you die, but that lacks grace. Instead, check this out. You move your ghost body so it's floating right above Claudius. He stares at you, his eyes wide. I'm sorry, he whispers. Way too late for that, you reply. You lower yourself to him, face to face, and keep going. His face dominates your field of vision, and then you're inside his skull, inside the pink of his brain, his blood darkly obscuring your sight. You sink slowly deeper and deeper into him, lining up your ghost body with his regular body, until you are just about occupying exactly the same space. Then you make yourself corporeal. What happens next happens so quickly and with such force that it's hard to describe. But Claudius explodes everywhere, captures most of it. I mean, you're fine, but man, is this disgusting. Literally disgusting. Gertrude wakes up, Eek. dripping in gore, screaming. You, my friend, have achieved revenge. You roll over onto your back and apologize to Gertrude. You explain over her screams what happened, and you tell her that you still love her, even though she married your brother mere weeks after you died. But you can't be with her anymore, you say. You tell her you need to go find your own path. Sorry about the bed, you say, floating up through the roof. You spend the rest of the afterlife acting as an immortal judge oh in the grave, exploding those who have committed the most egregious crimes, merely blowing the hands off those who have been awful people, but still, you feel, deserve a second chance. People whisper your name in fear. Criminals are a cowardly, superstitious lot after all, and it works out pretty good for you. You do a lot of good work for a lot of people, and yep, it turns out that blowing up bad guys never does get old. Nice. The end. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Hell yeah. Not to be. This game is $7. You should absolutely get this game. What does that say? Oh, beach sale. <gasps> it says chuff. Poison's misused. One choices made 13. You are, you were not. Bear is married. Zero. Alright. Um, let's do... Let's do one more little thing. Good news. The af Let's see what happens. Probably, you say out loud to nobody in particular. Probably I just died of a heart attack. Yes, there's definitely no foul play to investigate here. You're not that curious about the circumstances of your own death, but there's certainly room for incurious people in the afterlife. You, for example, spend the rest of your afterlife, which is forever, training little ghost puppies how to be better dogs. And they're so cute, and they stay puppies forever, and never grow up, but just get better and better and cuter and cuter. And, oh my gosh, it's adorable. The end. Aww. Which 
Choice is make one. Borrowing and lending none. I guess we're gonna do it just a little bit more. I'm glad that we got to see that. Let's go a little deeper. I know, right? Billy's Billy's gotta get his work. Good on. news. Let's listen in. This this is so good. Uh let's just wake her up. You bang some pots and pans together until she wakes up. Hey, I'm a ghost, but not of anyone you know. Listen, tell me more about that garden murder you saw, you say. In response, the woman looks at you terrified. She says something in Norwegian, and you suddenly feel dumb. You're already a spooky ghost, but now you're a spooky ghost talking to her in a language she doesn't even know. Anyway, by the time you find a piece of paper and write down, Hey, I don't want to kill you, it's too late. The woman has run out of the room. And every time she sees you, she gets mad and throws something at you and leaves. <laughs> you kind of blew it here, King Hamlet. You keep reading your diary every night for a few months, hoping that she'll mention more about the things she saw. But it's mostly filled with some really personal stuff about her feelings. And you kind of feel honestly creepy about this whole situation. The stuff that isn't personal is about how she wonders if ghosts read diaries. And if they do, if they know what totally awful people they're being. Long story short, eventually you leave her alone. Never Aww. find out who murdered you and settle down to a nice, pleasant afterlife with the other ghosts in Ghost Norway. You guys do charades with each other and everything. It's pretty fun. The end. <laughs> Cute. All right, we know it's not to do. Made two choices. No, one Rosencrantz, one Gilditzer. Let's try to let's what, what, what let's try to see if we can advance this. Just a touch. Good news. You hang around Norway for a bit, trying to This is definitely kind of a one off, but this is a, this is an absolute delight. Alright, we got let's swim. We're gonna swim. It's like 200 kilometers between the two nations. You know that, right? Apparently not. So you start to swim back to Denmark. But it's a lot of work to keep your body corporeal so that you can swim. So eventually, you get tired and stop. Mm. For a while, you float above the water, but that gets boring. So for most of the journey, you float down to the ocean floor and travel along it. Hey, there's a sunken pirate ship here. Hey, there might be treasure in it. Examine pirate ship. Oh, yeah, we're gonna go to the pirate ship. Man, it's awesome. And it's so cool to be an underwater explorer who doesn't need to breathe. I mean, it's kind of hard to see things without a light source. But your ghostly body glows a little when you want it to, so it's not bad. The pirate ship itself seems recently sunk. There are bodies trapped below decks, and yeah, that's unpleasant. The ocean bacteria haven't really started decomposing them yet. Bodies, man. Being corporeal, man. I don't know. You find the treasure room, and it's empty. It seems like the ship was attacked, raided, and then sunk. Somewhere up above your head, sailing on the surface of the great ocean Atlantic, is a really tough pirate ship that's just looking for treasure and or trouble. Too bad you're already dead, huh? But even if you were alive, what does a ghost need with money anyway? So I guess this has kind of been a pointless but still awesome endeavor. You explored the ocean bottom and found a sunken ship. Don't let anyone tell you that's not awesome. Okay, after several more days of very slow travel that we just skipped over because it got boring, you're back on Denmark's <laughs> shores. Arrive in Denmark. Oh. You know what? Go back and explore the ocean some more. Mm -hmm. It does kind of rule, huh? You realize that, wow, there's a lot of stuff down on the ocean floor that no living human eyes have ever seen. And while your dead ghost eyes won't actually change that fact, there's still lots of cool stuff to explore. You eventually travel all the way to the Mariana Trench, the very deepest part of the ocean, over 547 fathoms below sea level. Here, the water above presses down at over a thousand times standard atmospheric pressure, and the temperature is just above freezing. There are xenophyophores here, which are honest-to-god single-celled organisms so big, you can see them with your bare eyes. Wow. Why, here's one that's over 10 centimeters long. This is nuts. This whole place is nuts, and you're learning so much. You give up on your revenge plan and instead devote your afterlife to being a marine biologist in oceanic. And we got it. And it turns out ghost marine biology is pretty advanced compared to alive human marine biology. 
due in no small part to how you can hang around on the ocean floor for as long as you want and can't die. Nevertheless, you write several seminal ghost books on the subject, including Ooh. Look at this weird bug thing I found, and Gross, Life on the Ocean Floor, and make many hundred thousand ghost dollars. Ghost dollars! The end. Look at that! Dude, this is awesome. Twice as many. Five. And no, no bears. Okay, one more. All right, let's let's get to Denmark as fast as we can. Uh, wake this person with a piece of paper. Uh, wait for the next boat. Arrive in Denmark. You make it back to Denmark. Uh, we're gonna ignore. Using spooky ghost powers, you completely ignore what Gertrude and Claudia say to each other. That evening, you try to revenge yourself on Claudius by spooking him. The problem is, he never looks in any of the mirrors you're haunting, he assumes wind is knocking over his pots, and he thinks the ghostly wailing from beyond the grave is probably just a sick dog outside, who's having a pretty rough go of it lately. Oh, poor dog. This spooking him isn't going well, man. I don't know what to tell you. You'll have to get your revenge some other way. Maybe by... killing him? Reflecting on the fact he did kill you, you decide the only suitable revenge is to kill him as well. Because why not? You could totally take him. Especially since you've already died once and lived to talk about it. <laughs> but who is the best suited to do the killing? You could do it, but you did have a son. Partly so you wouldn't have to do every single thing around here. <laughs> kill Claudius yourself. Alright, let's get Hamie to get in here. Okay. Um, why? Because then he'll have sullied his hands with murder. And better for someone new to be forced to commit the murder act than for me to do it myself for some reason. Oh yeah, wait, this is dumb. I'm already dead and invisible nah. and I can fly. I guess I'll just do it myself. Nah. Okay, well, I did promise that you would get to make your own choices here. So that's what you do. You decide you're going to get Hamlet to do a murder for you. Even though that's awful. That's awful, dude. Listen. Hypothetical question. Let's say you do that, and Hamlet is eventually successful, and you are revenged. What would you do then? What would you do with your afterlife, if revenge was no longer its driving force? Accountant. Actor. Amusement <laughs> park employee. Animal husbandry. Animator. Architect. Athlete. Bakery owner. Bouncer. Brewmaster. Cake decorator. Oh, there's a lot chef, of these. Comic book artist, counselor, cowboy. cowboy, engineer, explorer, firefighter, food critic, game tester, geologist, librarian, You're, it's like linguist, a librarian. That's long haul trucker. Uh, it's like a breeder. Makeup artist. Um, you um, biologist, yeah, mechanic, you try to musician, painter, good animals. personal trainer, photographer, physician, pilot, policy analyst, professional gambler, professional golfer, programmer, researcher. Restaurateur, roller derby player, sex worker, skateboarder, spy, tamer of ghost dinosaurs, Science travel writer, watch of that. water slide builder, water slide tester, welder, window Ooh, cleaner, water slide tester, writer, good. welder as well. Welder has been life good affirming me. hypotheticals. I am here to see my son murder a man. Oh, let's let's do one of these. Tricked into deciding that maybe revenge isn't the best thing to obsess about once you're already dead and have fun ghost powers anyway, you instead do that job you just picked, and it's amazing. Ooh. It's more than amazing. You turn what could have been a simple thing to do in the afterlife into an actual social movement that accomplishes tons of good. Everyone rad in the Hell afterlife yeah. sees your work and thinks you're great. And man, this place is chock full of awesome people, so that's really something. Your work has inspired an entire world. Thank you. And good work, King Hamlet. You managed to overcome your stupid thirst for revenge, and made the afterlife awesome, and didn't mess up your only son's life either. This is really awesome. Oh, no. You did a great job. I'm gonna give you like 50 billion deca points. The end. Carl Hamlet. <laughs> Dude, that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points.
we can find that one. It's to die again for. It's Julia Child. Bent on revenge, King Carl Hamlet has become one of the most revered public figures in the afterlife. <laughs> Aww. Look at that guy, he's so happy. This guy rocks. Rock angels and deities. This game owns. Oh, this goes real fast. Casey Green! Mike Holmes! Meredith Graham! Sam Bozma, my boy! Zach Gorman! Let's hear it for Ben! Did you like have to copy and paste that somewhere? <laughs> Audioblog.com Look at the all these people. You just oh goodness. Chess skills! Mad lib skills, hell yeah. Look at that. Here's some info that may help find a bug. I don't know what this means. Well, would you look at that? Oh, they're achievements. What is this? Oh, oh. Break three people's necks. Cool. Cheated saw. We've gotten so many. This is probably on PC, too, if I had to guess. It's got them steams. Steams achievements. Hell yeah. See you, dude. Good deal. Under the sea. This is such a lovely game. What a great video game. What a great one. And book! It's a book! What a great book!